to further enrich our discussion, we have invited very uh, themed discussants to share their insights as well as their own assessment uh, with regard to the subject matter being discussed this morning. Allow me to introduce our first discussant today, Dr. Alejandro Herin. Dr. Herin brings a wealth of experience and diverse background to our discussion. Dr. Herin is currently a visiting research fellow at the University of San Carlos, Office of Population Studies. He retired as a professor of economics at the University of the Philippines School of Economics. He holds a PhD in economics, specializing in the economics of health, nutrition, population, and human resources. With years of professional experience in health and population policy development, monitoring and evaluation of public programs, and local governance for health. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Dr. Alejandro Herin. Dr. Herin, the floor is yours. Um, please unmute, unmute your audio. Thank you, good morning. Uh, I shall be discussing more general issues and uh, that's to provide a bigger picture. And I will leave it to uh, uh, SVP Renet to uh, provide the details. Uh, next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. In this presentation, uh, we discuss what is unique about uh, NHES, uh, what we need to communicate and establish regular stakeholder discussions, uh, what are some of the insights that we can already get from the analysis that have been uh, provided so far, including the analysis that are, have been presented earlier? And finally, we explore how NHES can contribute to uh, providing and enriching other data sources, particularly the Philippine National Health Accounts. Next slide, please. NHES is an addition to our national data sets. And what is unique about it is that uh, it links individuals and households directly to their healthcare use and healthcare expenditures, as have been described by the two presenters earlier. Other data sets like the FIES, uh, the Annual Poverty Indicator Surveys, uh, National Demographic Health Surveys, uh, do have individual data on uh, socioeconomic and demographic characteristics, but they lack other characteristics. Health expenditures, for example, are only at the household level uh, and not at the individual, and we have to estimate it uh, separately. Other, other data sets uh, contain data on healthcare utilization, but these are not linked to uh, health expenditures uh, and uh, health conditions. So uh, uh, NHS uh, is uh, unique in that sense. And as we shall see later on, it can also provide uh, additional information that can enrich uh, our national health accounts. Uh, how, how did uh, NHS come about? Uh, initial discussion on NHS between DOH and uh, HPDP of the UP School of Economics started around 2017. Uh, at the DOH, uh, we have Beverly Hall, uh, who was then uh, the research uh, director of the HPDPB under the direct directorship of Maylene Bertrand. Actually, Bev is both the initiator and inspiration for the NHS. Of course, being at the OH, uh, such in inspiration also carried with it a certain amount of coercion. At the HPDP, at the UP School of Economics, we have uh, Orville Solon, Carlo Panello, Carlos Stan Jr., and Saili Javier, who is uh, also one of the uh, authors of the data. Both these groups work on the survey design and the analysis plan in support of health sector reform, more particularly on issues uh, that are likely to be forthcoming uh, in the universal health care. Uh, as we know, the Universal Health Care Act was passed in 2019 uh, before uh, the design and uh, uh, implementation of the NHS. Then uh, the Health Policy Plus uh, International Organization took over the implementation of the survey and produced initial analytic reports, which we shall show la later. Uh, the work on further analysis 
and the design of implementation and the next round of NHES is being uh, uh, pre slide first. Uh, the work on further analysis and design and implementation of the next round of NHES is being continued by PIDS, which uh, we commend and congratulate. In the next slide, next slide, please. Uh, how do we maximize the use of uh, NHES? And uh, we can start by actually talking to each other. The stakeholders of NHES are the policymakers, the users, the producers of uh, the data and the analysis. And uh, occasionally, uh, some random bystander, such as myself. And what we need to communicate, uh, in addition to the unique features and technical aspects of the survey, are the results and insights from existing reports and analysis, both from the HP Plus as well as the current uh, reports. Uh, we also need to uh, discuss uh, the analytical plan for the further analysis of round one and the design and analytical plan for round two. And finally, let's, uh, we can also begin to explore uh, how the information from NHES, both round one, round two, and subsequent rounds uh, can be used to complement information uh, from other sources, particularly the national health accounts. Next slide, please. Uh, the initial analysis and reports uh, using the NHES has been provided by the uh, HP Policy Plus Group, uh, in that case, headed by Sile Javier, uh, Rebecca Ross, and, and their associates. And they produce uh, the analytic report as well as two uh, policy briefs. One is on uh, outpatient care, and the other one is on uh, uh, um, catastrophic expenditures. Uh, the content of the analysis includes the useful characteristics, household characteristics, the health seeking behavior and utilization, healthcare charges, health expenditures, financial protection, and this is where catastrophic health expenditures come in, and quality of healthcare uh, and patient experience. Uh, it, might, it might be noted uh, well, later on. Next uh, slide, please. Dr. Harin, you accidentally well, muted well, yourself. Which yeah. uh, which slide uh, did I go mute? Yeah, yeah. Um, this slide. Oh, okay. The current slide. Okay. Uh, insights from the PIDS analysis, starting from the report of EDA. Uh, one result we get there is that households with useful healthcare provider uh, utilize more outpatient care services compared to those with none. So uh, notwithstanding issues regarding the term usual healthcare provider, which includes uh, a lot of providers, different kinds of providers, and the term outpatient services, which also includes uh, a number of health services, uh, and also the issue of which comes first. Uh, you use services and therefore you have a usual healthcare provider, or you have a healthcare provider and therefore you use more services, or uh, are they really uh, determined by a common set of factors? So notwithstanding all of that uh, uh, technical uh, detail, uh, perhaps an interesting question is, what's good about having a useful healthcare provider? Uh, we don't uh, really see it there in the regressions, uh, some mention about the literature, but perhaps uh, we can imagine a focus group discussion uh, and uh, find out uh, what we can gather from that discussion. And we were, they will likely identify uh, the following. One is the provider knows uh, your history, especially if they are, uh, they have the electronic medical record system. Uh, the usual provider can provide uh, continuous, uh, consistent and more personal uh, care. And the important part of the continuity of care, which is uh, what is uh, uh, part of the definition of primary care provider, is that it can also lead to uh, patient satisfaction and uh, reduce duplication and uh, uh, utilization of uh, services and thereby, thereby improve health outcomes uh, more efficiently. 
And, and they could also add in that imaginary focus group discussion. And this is especially important for chronic conditions such as hypertension and diabetes and other non-communicable diseases. Uh, this is in addition, of course, to maternal and child care, which by its nature uh, requires a continuum of services. Now, if it is a good thing, uh, how can we design a delivery and financing system, uh, for example, consulta, to encourage people to have the useful healthcare provider? Uh, we ask the question, what are the barriers to uh, getting everyone a useful healthcare provider in the context of UHC? Now we're talking about a uh, primary care provider. There are uh, service delivery, service capacity issues, uh, doctors, diagnostic facilities, pharmacy services, and the capacity building uh, for this, especially at the LGU level, uh, as we have found out, that lags considerably, considerably behind the development of payment uh, systems by PhilHealth. Then there are also financing issues. Uh, investments in capacity takes time and resources, and perhaps this is where the DOH grant system, HFEP, and uh, deployment of medical personnel comes into play. But more importantly, uh, from the patient standpoint, disruption in services, uh, for example, the maintenance drugs, due to inadequate financial protection, can have adverse consequences on their health outcomes. Now, for the in the next slide, uh, next slide, please. Uh, the second study by uh, Toling on the uh, uh, out-of-pocket expenditures and non-communicable diseases. Uh, one result there is that public and private hospitals tend to be used more for outpatient care than RHUs and health centers. Uh, one could note here, has this something to do with uh, the wider scope of services in hospitals compared to RHUs and HCs? Uh, hospitals have uh, uh, a more complete diagnostics and uh, pharmacy services and specialist services. Or is this something to do with the perception of high quality since uh, also private clinics is uh, have higher use than uh, RHU and healthcare centers? And the second note is, what is the implication for this with respect to investments in uh, RHU and healthcare centers? Perhaps the focus would be towards increasing the scope of services to include diagnostics and pharmacies and additional staff, as we have mentioned earlier. And uh, as we also mentioned earlier, this takes time. Um, and this has to be uh, looked in the context of uh, an integrated local health systems as uh, what UHC is, is mandating or in the language of you know, service delivery networks. So it's not just uh, increasing the scope of services as in uh, uh, what we call the RHU, super RHUs. We don't need super RHUs in every municipality, but how does that work out together with the hospitals in a uh, integrated local health system? The second result, which is interesting, is that outpatient for outpatient services of NCDs, only private MHOs uh, insurance were found to significantly reduce outpatient out-of-pocket spending. Although uh, the coverage of your health is much larger than the MHOs. And one note here is, uh, is this due to the limited outpatient benefits from FIHO, at least historically, relative to the HMOs. Uh, the consulta has been implemented only in 2020. And earlier outpatient benefit package might have not have been widespread. The second note that we can consider is uh, what is the implication of this for the complementation of your health and HMO private insurance as mandated by the UHA Act. And on this note, we might also add uh, to consider how do we implement the, another mandated provision of the UHA Act, the implementation of the supplementary insurance benefit package uh, by field health. So there are uh, uh, big questions uh, arising from that particular um, findings. And finally, in the last uh, set of concerns, next slide, please. Uh, how can we uh, make use of NHS data to provide more detailed estimates of health expenditures 
by the PNHA. Uh, as we know, the PNHA has uh, shifted its uh, approach to developing health accounts by using the uh, WHO guidelines. And this approach allows us to come up with more uh, uh, disaggregated data on expenditures by healthcare delivery system categories like by provider, by function, by disease. And a prototype uh, estimates using a disaggregation that includes disaggregation of, of uh, let's say, provider with financing agents uh, required the use of distribution keys to allocate household expenditures into various categories. But uh, 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 PSA has not yet done that, and uh, we can understand because of the uh, difficulty of uh, providing adequate data to make the estimates robust. But perhaps a more detailed data from NS could allow more refined estimates of these distribution keys that can be an input into the national health accounts. And an example of this prototype, uh, the next slide please, example of these uh, NHAs. So you can have the, by function, uh, PSA now just reports total expenditures by function, but it doesn't also cross tabulate it by financing agent. So we can see medical goods, uh, green, uh, out of pocket. Uh, we also saw our patient curative care is green. And the next slide, uh, very briefly, next slide please. So medical goods, um, uh, also practically all green, ambulatory care, which uh, your outpatient comes in, uh, also green. And then finally, uh, the next slide, when we look at it in terms of disease categories, uh, you have of course the NCDs, a lot of them are unspecified, of course, but also uh, uh, maternal care, which is uh, interesting because uh, that we, we thought was uh, highly subsidized uh, with benefit packages. So uh, these are uh, examples of what can be done and NS can probably provide additional information to make this uh, allocation uh, keys uh, better. With that, the next slide, please. Uh, Thank you and Maburan. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Harin. We'll uh, hear more from you uh, in our open forum.